Hello, welcome to another lesson. So today we're going to do 3D Trig. Now, for those that know the old syllabus, 3D Trig used to be part of um, the Extension 1 uh, curriculum, but under the new syllabus, um, it's now part of the advanced course. So here we are. So if you go through the Extension 1 past papers and look at all the 3D Trig questions, you'll see that a majority of the time, I'd say 90%, of all questions sort of fall under the same sort of similar structure or framework. So today I'll set forth that framework and over the next few lessons we'll cover um, harder questions which may involve things like bearings and descriptions of angles of elevation etc. Um, and then I'll cover some of those questions that fall outside of the sort of set framework um, that I'll go through today. So Without further ado, let's do a few questions. It'll be a fairly quick video and you'll see that the structure and the framework that is used for all three questions I'll do today, um, fairly similar. So first question. So this is the classic sort of structure for a 3D tree question. It's a triangle py uh, pyramid, um, which comprises of, um, there are four sides, obviously, of this uh, triangular pyramid. However, there's only three that we care about. You can see in majority of the questions, 90% of all 3D tree questions, there's two sort of triangles that are at right angles, right, which has a height. So let me just highlight that height, right? And, and there's two sort of triangles sort of coming up at right angles to that height. So there's one that is elevated at 40 degrees, and there's one elevated at 55 degrees, right? And that is a classic arrangement for this question. With these classic arrangements, there's basically two types of questions that they normally ask. They either give you the height and they ask you to find the distance between those two points, or alternatively, and we'll see that in the later questions, they do the opposite, where they have the height as missing and they give you the distance between those two points and then they ask you to find the height. So both of those actually fall under the same um, approach, um, which we'll cover when we get to that question. So let's start this question. So what I want you to see is that there are two triangles at right angles. So there's one, and I'll start off with the one that is at 55 degrees. And that's 15 meters. Now a very smart thing to do is to firstly sort of identify to yourself this side A and this side B, because what you're going to do is basically use Sokotoa to have a relationship um, for this right angle triangle to make A the subject and then have a relationship in the second triangle to make B the subject. And then to find X, you basically connect A, B and X using the triangle on the base. So very straightforward. So for this triangle here, if this side here was A, then basically using your soccer tower, so tan in this case, is opposite on adjacent, making A the subject, so sort of switching this around, multiplying the A up, dividing 1055 down. There's our expression, so I'll highlight that in blue, which I'll use later on in the base. So. That's the first triangle, which has A as uh, the missing variable. Similarly, you see a right angle triangle here. That's 40 degrees. That's 15 meters. And the missing side here, a little bit big. Now, sometimes in the questions, I'll give you the points that, like say, for example, they might call this P and this Q. So you can actually use P, Q instead of B, but I always like to introduce my own variable just to make it a bit easier. A and B always works. So. In this case, once again, tan is the Sokotoa ratio that I will use. So tan 40 degrees is opposite over um, adjacent. So making B the subject, then once again, switch those two around, times a B up, divide the tan down, 15 on 10, 40 degrees. Beautiful, let's highlight that in green. And then that leads me nicely to the triangle on the base. Now, there's very various levels of difficulty, but when there's a right, when there's a right angle, it's probably the easiest case because basically, if I was to draw that triangle two dimensionally on the of the base, you got A over here, B over here, 
and X is a missing variable there. So then obviously the connection between all those three is using Pythagoras X squared equals to A squared plus P squared. And once you get that, it is a simple case of subbing this guy into the value of A and then subbing this guy into the value of B and you pretty much have it, right? And then it's a simple case of an X a calculator exercise from that point on. So multiply that 15 on 10, 55 squared plus 15 on 10, 40 squared. So really, really straightforward stuff there. And maybe for each of these questions, I haven't actually said it, um, what the rounding should be. Maybe do it to one DP. That looks to be, um, let's see, what's that answer? About 20.7 meters. So a fairly straightforward start, hopefully. So in that case, um, make sure you identify the two triangles meeting at right angles, which in which case you use Sokotoa, that's the blue and the green, and then the connection on the base. Um, in this case, it's a right angle, so we just use Pythagoras. Pretty straightforward. So that's the framework, basically comprising of three steps. One, two and three. So let's try it again now. This time the base is um, a little bit harder where you can see the structure exactly the same. You've got two right angle triangles and you can almost assume, you know, whether it be like contextually, it might be like a flagpole or a tower or something and um, that is vertical um, in direction. Assume right angles because then you can um, make soccer tower work. And then on the base, in this case, we just need something a bit more um, than Pythagoras. So let's go there now. So once again, I'm going to set myself a variable here of A. and set myself a variable here of B, just to make my life a little bit easier in terms of working out. So you can see, once again, soccer tower, the framework works where you got one angle there, of 35, you got 10 meters here, and then on the base here, you got A. Once again, use Sokotoa, and once again, it's 10 equals to 10 on A. So once again, switch that around 10 on 10, 35 degrees. Yep. Similarly, and um, you have the right angle. Triangle, let me draw that a little bit better. On the other side here, where you have 25 degrees there, 10 meters here, and a side of B over here, 10 again, equals to 10 on B, and then switch that around 10, 25 degrees. Now, later on, we'll see some examples where um, some teachers try to, I guess, make it um, slightly different to the framework where instead of 10, because right now it's always going to be 10, they might change it to either cot or sometimes even sine, etc. But it's always soccer tall, always soccer tall. And with the aim of basically finding expressions for A and B such that you can then now connect them using the triangle on the base. So on the base, we can see A, B, a hundred, oh, also X here and 110 degrees in the middle. So the connection for this question, actually, let me give it a bit of highlighting, just to make it easier for me to sub it in. The connection is using the cosine rule, three sides, one angle, cosine rule. Now, cosine rule in this case would be X squared equals to A squared plus B squared. Now, for those that don't know, cosine rule is just like um, Pythagoras with an adjustment, right? Minus 2AB cos 110 degrees. So that's all pretty straightforward because then all you got to do now is sub in the value for A, sub in the value for B, and it's just a calculator exercise thereafter. It just looks complicated. So sub in A into there and also into here, and then sub in B into here and into here, and you should get something that looks a bit long and scary, but it is just calculator work. It's just calculator work where you go, and what was A? It was 10 on 
10.35, okay. So 10 on 10, so 10 on 10.35 plus 10 on 10.25 degrees minus 2, 10, 10, 35, 10, 10, 25, multiplied by cos 110. Yeah, so pretty straightforward. Now, just keep in mind that if you do punch this in your calculator, that's the value for your, your x. So theoretically, what you're supposed to do is then sort of square root. Now, I, I can do this. This is really cool with computer. Uh, I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and then sort of get rid of my squared here. Let's put a square root. Pretty sweet. Yeah, therefore, if you did that on your calculator, um, maybe once again to 1DP, it's looking like a number of 29.6 meters. So that question compared to the last one was a little bit more intense with the cosine rule applied, but structurally, exactly the same. Steps one, two, Sokotola, and then three, connector with the base. So the framework is such that it's a three-step process. It shouldn't be that different for most of these questions. Now, within this framework, there are two types, like I said. The first type here is to find the value of x. The second type generally is where the height is missing. And we do exactly the same thing. We do exactly the same thing as before. The only difference is that we make x a subject instead. So, sorry, h a subject instead. So let's do it. So once again, for this question, we approach it with a, b, and do exactly the same thing. Just keep in mind that h is missing, so we'll make, need to make that the subject in a sec. So in this case, once we start with the right angle triangle, which has H 40 degrees and A. So tan 40 degrees is H on A. Now it looks a bit confusing now because there's two variables at play, but we're going to do exactly what we did in the previous questions and make A the subject. So switch that around, H on tan 40 degrees, beautiful. So highlight that, exactly the same as what we did before. And then similarly, the other right angle triangle, 25 degrees there, that's H and that is B. So surprise, surprise, tan again, H on B, switch that around. That's B. And then we connect them with the triangle on the base. Now, this bit here is interesting. Um, it looks confusing. And I guess this is potentially the hardest part about 3D trick when they, this step here. So the concept is not too bad. It's the numbers here and the connection that might be a bit problematic. So 200 meters there, and that's B and that's A. So once again, we're going to use a cosine rule because it's 100 degrees and not 90, in which case we would have used Pythagoras. So I need a bit of space. You can see here, cosine rule says 200 squared. So before that was missing, we would have the x squared, but now it's 200 squared. So equals a squared, b squared, right? Pythagoras with an adjustment to a, b cos of the middle angle. And then we do what we did before. A, A, B, B, and we're going to sub in this blue expression into there and there, and then sub in the green expression into here and also into here as well. Now, what you're going to see once you do sub it in is H squared in every term on the right-hand side. And if you knew your marbles here, you would then have a 
logical next step of factorizing all the h squares out right and just to be clear you can sort of see there right h squared h squared h squared right so i can actually factorize h squared from the right hand side it is a bit of a monster when I do factorize h squared, the thing inside this bracket, but it's just numbers and it's just calculator word work. So that's 10 squared 40 plus one on 10 squared 25 minus. Now, if I take out the two yellow h squares there on top, it's two cos 110, oh sorry, 100 rather. On the bottom is 10 40 times 10 25. And that equals to 200 squared. And I am going to then make h squared the subject by dividing this square bracket over and then square rooting. So you should have a final calculator step where h equals to, so it's divided over. So it'll be like 200 squared divided by one on 10 squared 40 plus one on 10 squared 25 minus two cos 100 on 10 40 10 25 with a big square root outside it and once again to one dp if you did this correctly on your calculator 76.1 meters i believe yep so that is possibly this question that i'm doing now is possibly the most common question you'll see in past papers of 3d trig where the height is missing so you just got to be aware that there's always going to be a h squared in the right hand side for all three terms and then you basically factorize a h squared out and then make h the subject by dividing the bracket over and then square rooting now this working out looks complicated so when you do this, I want to propose a little mini hack just for this question. And I'll end it on here. I'll end this video on here that sometimes it might be worth, I'll say, oh, 10, 10, 40 and 10, 25 is always on the bottom. What I say to my class is I'm not a big fan of punching fractions by 10, 40 on my calculator because you know, it takes another step. Instead, another way to do this, a smarter way is instead of using the 40 and the 25 degrees here, which is fine, right? You can do it this way and it's perfectly um, acceptable. Sometimes it's better to use the angle in the right angle triangle here above here. So that's 50 degrees using all stations central. And these two, that's 90. So these two must be um, adding up to um, 90, so that must be 65. So what that means is if you use the blue um, angle instead of the 40 degrees, instead of 10, 40, Try 1050, because 1050 is A on H, where if you want to make A the subject, you times a H up, and can you see, you now have an expression for A that is not a fraction. 1050 is upstairs, while 1040 was downstairs. Similarly, if you did the same here, 1065 would equal to B on H, times a h up, b equals to h, 1065. So I guess what I'm trying to say, a little bit of a hack in terms of not using fractions is to use the angles upstairs using all stations central. Because once you do that, you can actually use these two expressions instead of these two to sub into your expression downstairs just to clean it up a little because there's no fractions. So. We'll be doing more of that in the next lesson, but hopefully uh, that was okay. Just to set forth a framework for us to do 3D trig. In the next few videos, I'll be covering um, some harder questions which involve um, bearings, angles of elevation and the like. And then in a subsequent video to that, um, we'll explore some questions for 3D trig. We sort of falls outside of this framework. There's a one that's a classic hard question in 3D trig um, and we'll, um, have a go at that. So hopefully that was useful. If you like this video, um, please uh, click on the like button downstairs or um, and uh, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends. See you guys later.